The factory owner's manual for this car refers to the auto transmission as being a sealed unit, and some even describe them as sealed for the car's life. But that's not really true, and certainly doesn't mean that we don't need to be servicing these to ensure the best performance and lifespan. It just means that they made it slightly harder to do so. Probably because too many people filled their transmissions with engine oil or something. Never mind though, this is still a job your average hack can do at home, including a full flush of the old fluid. Best of all, these four speed autos were similar enough for many models of Falcon that this can help some of you right from its first appearance in the EAs up to something like our BA and even newer than that. Yep, these gearboxes really stuck around that long and with some servicing, hopefully yours will too. Oh and yes, for those watching along, I am kicking off our turbo series by servicing this auto. I need to give it every chance of living through the extra power it's about to get. Gotta eat your veggies before you have your dessert or something like that, I guess. Anyway, hope you enjoy this one. Welcome back into Brownie's Garage. This is the second episode in our series where I'll be putting a turbo on the NA engine in this car, but it's pretty typical to find other jobs to do along the way. And there's no point making more power if this car isn't driving at all. If we want this four speed auto to survive a turbo, then it's probably a good idea to start with a fluid that keeps it alive. Unfortunately, Ford are pretty vague in detailing when these gearboxes should be serviced, or at least they are in the service guide for these BAs. To quote the guide, auto transmission fluid level should be checked when fluid leaks are evident or if transmission performance is reduced. Fluid changes are not required unless your vehicle is operated continuously under severe conditions. Some of these severe conditions are listed from the obvious heavy towing, ranging right down to excessive idling, which they recommended uh, fluid changes every 45,000 kilometers for. So the service interval seems to be anywhere from 45 kilometers to never, if you go strictly by this. Luckily though, they don't seem to be nearly as sensitive to the condition of the oil as some of the newer gearboxes. I've heard of plenty of people doing exactly as Ford say, and not really paying it any attention unless it develops an oil leak or they find an issue, it starts not shifting. For me, even though this car hasn't done a lot of kilometers, I have no idea how long the transmission oil has been in this car. So we'll be going a full flush and replace it with nice new stuff. And part of my motivation for doing a full flush on this car is so I can do it once and probably forget about it for years and years again. But I'm not the best example, so maybe do your own research on how often you'd like to do this service, or whether you should do it at all. Sounds odd, but there are actually reasons why you may not want to do a full flush, and there's whole videos out there dedicated just to this subject. This service and flush process will be the same for NA and turbo cars, and very much similar for earlier models, right up to some of the newer ones. We'll discuss the few differences between the years, at least as they relate to servicing these, as we go. Now, I'm sure in a workshop they'd have tools to put pressure or vacuum on the system to best do the work we're going to do, but there's other ways around this for backyard hacks like us. We'll be using the system itself in the auto to help pump out the old fluid and circulate the new. So, here's what I have to do it. We have a filter kit. I'm using this Ryko RTK1 kit, which sent me back about $20. We also have four liters of the recommended fluid from Penrite, which is their ATF FS. Uh, I'll also be using this pump. You'll probably want something like this 
if you're lucky enough to have one of these transmissions without a dipstick or fill hole. Sure, it's not the best out there, but as you can see, I've had it a while and it's done the job in the past. This should only set you back about $20 or so for something like this. These and some basic tools will probably be about all you need if, like a lot of people who do this job, you only change the filter and refill the fluid that you lose when doing this. This will be far better than nothing, especially if it's been done somewhat regularly, but can leave a lot of old fluid in the torque converter and some in the lines or cooler. This next bit is the only somewhat pricey part of this whole job. You may need up to some 12 litres or so of oil to complete the flush. I'll let you know how this goes. This varies depending on who you ask, but hopefully this is more than enough, especially with these generally costing around $50 per four litres, and some other makes will be more expensive than that. I'm using the Penrite recommended oil for this. The factory does recommend Castrol TQ95, but Oils have hopefully improved further since then, and I'm sure Penrite wouldn't recommend this if it wasn't suitable for the job. And I've got some empty bottles with this 10 millimeter clear hose from Bunnings and a clamp to help with flushing the fluid. You'll see what this is for once we're in there. So let's get started by getting the transmission a little warm then jacking the car up level on stands in all four corners. With the car safely on stands and as level as we can get it, we can move underneath. Ford and the producer of these transmissions were kind enough to not fit a drain plug at all to these gearboxes, so we have to drop the pan just to drain it. But wait, before you do that, they also neglected to give us a dipstick to check oil levels or for a nice easy fill location. Instead, we have to do both of these for an inspection hole on the driver's side, tucked right up near the exhaust that you've also just got warm by running the car. As odd as it sounds, this little bolt may be a little controversial. The debate between whether it is a 16mm or 5 8 head has been had many times before. For the record, in the three or so cars I've done this in before, a good quality 6.16mm socket has worked, but I decided to try a 5 8 socket slightly smaller at 15.875 millimeters and fortunately a common spark plug socket size. Being careful not to burn yourself, we want to make sure the bolt in this can be removed before we empty the transmission. Too often you hear of these being rounded off, leaving no way of checking the oil level and making refilling it difficult. That's good enough for me. Once again, the 16mm six point socket has got that off for me without any dramas. I did go to use the 5 8 but as you can see, I can't even fit it up there to try it. That's your standard 5 8 spark plug socket. I will, once I get it out, test it over at the bench to see if a shorter version of this would work for anyone that has rounded the head of that a little bit previously. But 16mm six point socket worked fine for me. Find me in the comments. Now we can go back to making a mess thanks to the lack of a drain plug. I've loosened off all the bolts slightly and now I'll loosen the ones at the back more and work forward again so that the pan can drop more at the back and try to contain at least some of the fluid in our drain pan. That was the plan anyway. Once the fluid stops running you can carefully undo all the bolts then spill fluid down your arm while moving the pan off and out of the car. While I'm already filthy and under the car, we can also remove the old trans oil filter. These may have slightly different hanger setups holding them in, but there's not too much to them. One trick to look out for once the filter is out though. There's an o-ring or seal that goes over this tube off the filter and goes into this space here in the auto. Make sure you get this out with the old filter or the new one may not push in correctly there'll be another one to fit in the kit with your new filter. We can now inspect the old pan. They all come with these circular magnets and some get more than others, likely thanks to some accountants saving cash. If you haven't done this before and you see material on the magnet or in the pan, you may be freaking out. Don't. An amount of material on these seems pretty normal. Unless it is really full of this stuff, then just clean this, the pan and the gasket surface and try to erase it from your memory. She'll be right. 
Once that's clean, we can fit the new o-ring or seal to the filter and line the gasket up with the bolt holes on the pan. I find that this gasket normally holds the bolts if you want to put them through, and this doubles to help holding the gasket from shifting when installing. Back under the car, we can now pop the new filter back in. Quickly clean the gasket surface on the trans and you're ready to refit the pan. I've started each of the bolts as little as I can to hold the pan, so I can check the gasket looks to still be sitting okay. Then push the pan to the car while just barely nipping the bolts up. These only need 6 Nm, meters, which is barely anything at all. And I've done the final tightening sequence from the centre working my way to the outside. We can now undo the fill hole and refill the pan using our pump. Alternatively, if you have enough clear hose mentioned earlier, you may like to run some of this from the engine bay into the fill hole to speed this up. Knowing when this is full is really technical. It will start dribbling back out the hole. If you are only doing a service and not the full flush, you can follow our later steps on starting the car and going through the gears, refilling and checking the level. But for a full flush, we still have more work before getting to that. There are three main styles of cooler for the transmission that I've seen, and therefore, where will intercept to flush the fluid left in the converter and rest of the system differs slightly, but the procedure will be very similar for all of these. Most of these auto cars from EA up to BA and even some BF will have the cooler integrated in the radiator. You'll see the steel lines going in at the top and bottom of the radiator on the driver's side. The oil flows into the bottom of the cooler, then back out through the top. Perfect for us. If we can remove the top line and flush the old oil out here, we'll also be flushing the cooler. You could shop around and find a male fitting with a bar bend to fit for this. Instead, I've cut a section of this steel line with the fitting from a car at the wreckers. Fit this into the top hole, add a section of our clear hose and route it to an empty container for our next step. As mentioned earlier, some of the later models will have the lines running to a heat exchanger under the intake manifold. I haven't played around with one of these, but the principle will be the same. Pop off the return line and you should be able to fit a section of clear hose to the pipe on the cooler for the next step. I don't have one here, so cannot confirm, but I believe you'll need larger 19mm clear hose. Hopefully someone in the comments can help by confirming this and which hose is the return line on this unit. We have probably the least convenient setup for this job on our car, having bypassed the in-radiator cooler and mounted a PWR cooler up the front. This is a great upgrade, not only for better cooling, but to save your auto from possible contamination, as these coolers in the radiator have been prone to failing and mixing the trans fluid with coolant. Believe it or not, coolant in the oil does not help cool the auto. Check our video installing this cooler for more details on this setup, including how to remove the front bumper, which I've removed today using YouTube magic for this video to save some long time viewers watching it again and again. While I do that, if you're enjoying the channel and want to support us, maybe consider heading over to our store for some quality gear at a good price. And you know it's quality, because I haven't worked on it at all. Now that I can get to it, we can remove the top hose from the cooler, make a mess draining any of the old fluid from this top hose, and fit our clear hose to the cooler. This clear hose is then ran to a drain pan or container to collect the old oil, as you would with the other two options listed. We should now all be back on the same page for the steps going forward, and be in for much the same pain. Being careful that the car won't move or fall off your stands, we can now start the car with a foot on the brake, and cycle through the gears to start pumping the old fluid out. If you're doing this alone, it's a good idea to route your clear hose and container to somewhere you can easily see it, or better yet, a helper in the driver's seat will speed this up. Cheers, Mrs. Brownie. Hurry up, it's cold out here. She was more than happy to help. I'm pumping the fluid out one to two litres at a time before turning the car off and refilling the pan with the same amount of clean fluid. What I'm watching for while doing this is that there is a fairly constant stream of fluid, showing I haven't drained too much, and the fluid starts to clear up. This is where our clear hose and containers come in handy. After some time, all of my 12 litres of fluid, including the initial pan refill and what's been lost on the floor, I've checked some fluid samples on paper towel, and I'm happy enough with how the fluid coming out is looking. You can now reconnect your factory system, start the car and quickly run through the gears again. Refill the pan until it's full and a small amount of fluid dribbles out the fill hole, then your fill bolt can be reinstalled. Don't go over tight on this, you'll need to undo it again shortly. 
At this stage, you would finish any reinstall you had left, like the front bumper for us. We can then drop the car down and go for a really short lap around the block before getting it back up and doing one last fluid level check with the transmission just warm and the car turned off. And by now, you absolutely cursing Ford for not keeping the dipstick for the transmission as you crawl under again and try not to burn your arm on the exhaust this time. You've seen me do that enough already in this video though, so I'll do that off camera, but if I screwed up and have any issues on the drive, then future me will drop back in about now. Okay, good sign. That future jerk me isn't here, so must all be working. Hopefully that's helped a few of you at home. If I did the job again, I probably would have picked up another four liters of oil or so, but I'd hate to think just how much you could flush through the system before it was perfectly clean. As you can see from our paper towel test, We've got the clear red one there first. That's a fresh fluid. The worst of it that came out of the pan and the first flush is next to it. Going down to our last flush on the other end and looking pretty clear again. I'm confident we've got it looking much better in there and extended its life so I'm happy. Other than the oil that is now everywhere on the floor and pretty much everywhere in the garage that I have to clean up after this. And that's not the only reason I'm kicking myself. I probably should have done this job a little later in the series. I think I'll have to move this trans cooler for more activities in this front area soon and lose a little of that new fluid probably on the floor again. More on that coming, but I wanted to get the service out the way so we can have a good solid bank of upgrades and turbo videos from here on. And that's the plan. Next video, we'll be getting into our first upgrade to support the turbo conversion. And it'll be a fairly common mod for those guys with factory turbo cars as well. Hope you'll join us then. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you get notified when new videos come out, as well as sharing and liking this video if you've enjoyed it. Until then, I hope you'll join me. Thanks very much for watching and catch you then. Cheers.